All right. Hello, everybody. We are jumping back into Free Code Camp React today. Uh, we've got a, a pretty full meeting today. Uh, and uh, we're going to be going through create a controlled input. Your application may have more complex interactions between state and the rendered UI, for example, form controls, control elements <coughs> for text input, such as input and text area, maintain their own state in the DOM as the user types. With React, you can move this multiple, uh, with, with this mutable state into a React component state. The user input becomes part of the application state. So React controls the value of that input field. Typically, if you have React components with input fields, the user can type into, it will be controlled input form, be a controlled input form. The code editor has the skeleton of a component called controlled input to create a controlled input element. The component state is already initialized with an input property that holds an empty string. This value represents the text a user types into the input field. First, create a method called handle change that has a parameter called event. When the method is called, it receives an event object that contains a string of text from the input element. You can access this string with event target.value inside the method. Update the input property of the component state with this new string. In the render method, create the input element above the h4 tag, add a value attribute which is equal to the input property of the component state, then add an on change event handler set to chain handle change method. When you type in the input box, that text is processed by the handle change method set, excuse me, set as the input property in the local state and rendered as the value in the input box on the page. The component state is the single source of truth regarding the input data. Last but not least, don't forget to add the necessary bindings to the constructor. Okay, man, this is a, this is a pretty dense challenge. Did anybody completely understand that? I, I may have to reread this one. Anybody, anybody got any thoughts on this one? Is there any input tag? Hello, input tag. Um, no. There's an input prop. We can start. <clears throat> we can start like uh, by creating. We, we should write that. Like, uh, under uh, under, we should write like, that input. Input on some text area, I think. Yeah, there's an input here. For, but it's a prop. The state only. But now uh, you have to create the methods. We have. Just handled. go through that text once again and we'll read the text again. read it again yeah just yeah there's just a lot going on in this one okay your your application may have more complex interactions between state and the rendered ui for example form control elements for text input such as input and text area okay so we're going to be dealing with input for this challenge they maintain their own state in the DOM as the user types. With React, you can move this mutable state into a React component state. 
so here when user type something that type of text will be moved into state yeah on your key press yeah actually in react we have we have two kinds of uh, components control control on control components and uncontrolled components yeah. uh, if we want to get the user input from the ui we need to make that uh, input uh, html put tag into a control component so that whenever user type something into that we say we uh, save that text into our local state that's what this text is i think controlled input earlier i will share that uh, documentation give it a short one so it will clear some uncontrolled documentation has some clear explanation then this yeah this on. this explanation is wow i shared that documentation link for forms there is some explanation on what's controlled and uncontrolled Yeah, it's just like way too abstract. How long is this? Yeah, it talks about controlled components. Here you can see that example was exactly control components. Double block. This one. yeah you can see that input text here and we are on change event is there when the value changes it will call some hand, handle change method that handle change method updating the state and if you observe there we are fetching that value again here into the input box value equal this dot state dot value is update the state and again we are pulling that value from state to display it here in input box mm -hmm. so it is like a one way binding there this is called control implements the our text will be moved into state again it come back into our input box mm -hmm. if you observe this input type text the value value is if we mention some value it will be displayed in that text box you can play around and come back to that uh, free code command just write some input tag there in the return you will understand better once in this part like yeah in this the render part, uh, in our challenge yeah just write some simple input and uh, input HTML input type equal text. Okay, I remember. This input type is I have a close tag like that. Yeah. yeah, that is input. Then give it a type equal text, so it will be a mm -hmm. text type. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. That it actually populated something. Ah, uh, what is this there? Type uh, text. So this is basically a simple input box. Now mention some value equal to something there. You can see what value do there. Just write value equal to some string in the code itself. Value equals some any text. Uh, hello or something so the value will be placed in that input box so here in react we are pulling that value from state value equal to this dot state dot i think which one See, yeah here we are mentioning hello hard coding the value hello value equal hello means we are writing it explicitly yeah yeah But in using react we push that value from state so value equal to this dot state dot some value so go to our state and is there any state dot in our constructor just scroll up and see is there yeah you have some input this give some text there yeah give some text there 
Ah, that's fine. We have come back to our input and pull that value here. This. Come back to uh, no 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 problem. Just come back to our input input tag. Input type equal to text. Oh, the hello. tag. Yeah. Yeah. In place of that hello, pull that state here. Write that state in curly braces. This dot state that input. Okay. Okay. Remove that. Uh, uh, yeah. Curly yeah, it's got to be in the curly braces. Yeah. These That's dots. how we know it's JavaScript. That's state dot input. Uh, input. Yeah. Thank you. So. So now we are, we are getting that value from state. And the controlled input is we need to add one more thing here. The on change event handler. Whenever that value changes, it will update that state in our mm -hmm. constructor state. So we need to write some on change here in the event handler. After that value attribute, we need to write some on change event handler. And then we type something, it will update our state. Mm -hmm. You can read from here the code. Input. The code editor has the skeleton of a component called controlled input to control to create a controlled input element. Okay, so yeah, a class component is called controlled input. The component state is already initialized with an input property, so it's already got this. And that holds an empty string. We change that to hello world. This value represents the text a user types into the input field. <clears throat> All right, so first create a method called handle change. Yeah, write that method once first. In the length so we do we should do our binding here, right? Yeah. Bind that handle chain and write that method. Okay, let's do this dot state. Handle chain. The method is handle chain. Uh, do we not need to do the binding there? there? Yeah, this dot handle chain. For the binding? Yeah. Okay. And. No, no, equals. There is no. Parenthesis there. Oh, we don't need to make it a method. Okay. Yeah. Handle change. Dot bind. This. Yeah, that is binding. Okay. And come to the line to and. Is there another? There's not another method. On change. We need to on change too, right? On change is even handler, I think. I will come back to that. Oh, okay. Just so it's just on, it's just events. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, write the handle thing. So now I can make the method here. Yeah. And I'll change. Okay, go on. And then. Yeah, we have handle chain method. Then. Okay. So then method is called it receives an event object that contains a string object so add some prop to the uh, parameter event. I need to say it's event yeah when the method is called it receives an event object that contains a string of text from the input so here write the <clears throat> set, set state this dot state state start set, set. State. Uh, no, no. Set state is a method, right? Okay. Instead that we we write object. Instead we write some object to update that. Yeah. yeah. Here we need to update that input value. So input colon. Uh, use that value event dot target that. Event. The, the input colon. Input. Cool. Oh, like like we had there for hello world. Yeah, even dot they mentioned in our the text we just read even dot target dot target. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm typing it out. It's just slow. 
Dog value. Yeah, I typed it. It's just not going. Yeah. Okay. Update the input property yeah. of the composed state with this new string. Okay. All right. So we can we can get that uh, input value from that target yeah. event. Yeah. And let's move on to the update the input. Blah, blah, blah. In the render method, create the input element above the H4 tag. Add a value attribute which is equal to the input property of the component state. Then add an on change event handler set to the handle change method. Yeah, we'll just finish it and we'll move on to the next lines. Come back to our input. Is it on above H4? Yeah, right. You have type and we have mentioned the value equal to state. So right on change event handler. On change, just like on click, we have on change also equals no, no equal in curly process. Just use that this dot handle is equals. and then we should write some arrow function to pause that again. Just complete that, we will check that. Okay. Now we got this. This far. Add a value and attribute which is equal to the input property. We we added that value equal to in property of the component state. We have did that part value equal to component state. So move on to that when you type in. Okay. When you type in the input box, that text is processed by the handle change method set as the input property in the local state and rendered as the value in the input box on the page. Uh, sorry. And rendered as the value in the input box on the page. The component state is the single source of truth regarding the input data. All right, so we already had the binding, right? So now are we are now just clear our uh, state into empty again. We remove the hello level and try to type site something. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, clear it. Right? Um. Yeah, it, it's working. You can see that in the below. We're getting that output of the control input. <laughs> Yeah. The, the P tag, line 25, is where mm -hmm. it's rendering outputting. that is straight. Yeah. Yeah. So does this pass now? Yeah, I think. No, it's this. Interesting. We said that it is to a hollow world in the state oh, okay. the constructor. In our constructor, we mentioned hello world, right? For our state value. Scroll up to the constructor. Oh, okay. That should be empty. I see. Okay. Interesting. This understand the concept of the state. Not clear. Yeah, I don't know how clear that was for me, but did did anybody else have questions? I'm just gonna drop this into uh, controlled input. Controlled input. Controlled input. Okay, thanks. Whew. 
Okay. Let's save that. Uh, Render that in your app. Before committing, just render the control input in your app so you can see that. Okay, I'll just commit this real quick. It'll take me two seconds. Okay. okay it, may, it may add one more thing to the commit. That's why. That's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, just using it with this. Uh, what did yeah. I name it? Controlled input. Yeah, yeah. control it. Uh, update the line seven also here. Control input. And controlled input. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Amputated. The okay. All right. Then just start that with this npm start. npm install. npm start. PM. I think is it NPM? Uh, no, I think not no. It's not not NPM I think. I think it's uh, I think he's in a different folder. A different folder. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um I need to go to, I think it's just React. What is that? Yeah, React. React and W3 Dev. Give tab, I think. React, W3 Dev Labs. Yeah, my computer. Use tab. Yeah. Okay, now I'm in there. Now oh, I can do yeah. in Start. So get me here. Let's see what's in here. Uh, is, it, is it FCC React, I think? <laughs> no, I think I must have created a... I, have, I think you created a folder FCC React, I think. Okay, folder, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's in there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is a project. No, that's wrong. NPM. Oh, I misspelled it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is pretty bad. Yeah, it's that's good. Okay. Uh, can you show me that again? The controller, the code. Yeah, one sec. Let me. All right. Oh, this is still my other thing. Uh, I don't know what it's doing. Still working from the old code there. Okay, it's the import thing, maybe. Uh, saved this. No, no, I think we need to think. Hmm. Let me get on my file.
Just go to the control input. Control input component. Yeah. Just scroll up and import React type in here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Attempted import error. Uh, and export that control input in the last line. Export default. Here. I end up, yeah. After at line thirty two, right? Export default. That controller component component control component control input. Yeah. Same. Ah, okay. So let's output it. Okay. So now I can try uh, input. Yeah. To import some component, first we should export it from the component side. We are importing it in an app, right? So for that we should import export the component. So you can import on app. What was that? Pardon? In our come come back to our comp control input editor, VS Code, come back to your VS Code. Okay. That last line is you mentioned the export. Right. Yeah. So if we are importing this component in app, right? We, yeah, yeah. So to import it somewhere, we should export it. We yeah, import it to React. No, no, no. Just come back to app, app component. Open the app component. Here we imported controlled input, right? In line two. Yeah. Line two. To import yeah. it, we must export that component. Otherwise, it won't. Ah, uh, okay. I see. So it's like reciprocal action here. Yeah. In terms of sending and receiving. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, import and export. Okay. All right. Well, we got that one to work. But uh, my HTML was jacked up. I think it was still from the other one. I don't know. Wait a minute. Uh, where is that coming from? Or is it from this? That is from where we are binding that DOM. We are rendering our app into DOM in here in the middle of this. Uh, no, I was looking for something else, but I guess I can't find it. I think I was looking for this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we place it somewhere in the index data is new. Public. Yeah. I think it's no need, not needed there. Just remove that. That should be come from component. Don't update there. If you want to put some heading, that should be come from component. Okay. You can create that heading in your controlled input component itself. Just don't touch that index.html in public folder. Yeah, let me do this then. Just remove that header tiles also. If you want some header, you can do it from the, our component itself. Come back to our controlled input. Yeah, let me just take all these out there. Okay. Yeah, I'll just go 
go ahead and get into this. Here in the div, write that header as well. Yeah. You can use simply use H1. Yeah. Okay. Let me save that. Uh, uh, changed index.html and moved h1 uh, to render. Okay. All right. Now check the sorry and yeah, re didn't be changed. Well, I thought it would be. Hit. Did I save did it? it? Yeah, I thought I did. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Boom. All right. Did it anybody else want to do this? Like walk through creating this on their own VS Code? Did everybody get to, to this point? Anybody? Let's finish there, I think. That's it. Let's finish one, two, three. We only three. All right, Jamal. We'll see you, man. Jamal left, I think. Yeah, he's already gone. Oh, so it's just me, you, and Mesfin. We lost EB, too. Yeah. We lost EB, Deadpool. Who else was here? Jamal. Um. Okay. To address on the concept, this concept, just read the docs. I think docs explain clearly than this. Yeah. Record, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I just need to read the reactjs.org docs. They are very simple. It won't take that much of time. Okay. And you already have some setup. So try to run those examples from docs. In your setup, so to understand. Yeah. Are we here we need to create a form and. Yeah. Uh, I might just wait to do this one with everybody here tomorrow. Okay. Since it's just, it's just the three they're of us the, now. Yeah, they're only two. Um. Mesfin, you've been pretty quiet. Is there something that you wanted to try to make to help you learn here for the input? No, I'm just trying also to understand here. I'm reading along, following you. For this one or for the previous one? Other for the previous one. But it's okay. Uh, I'm Do we want to just read the... Uh, React uh, documentation then? Yeah. Just go through the docs, I think it will clear some. <clears throat> okay. Well then, why don't I just read through this page? And it, At least this number nine. Yeah. We'll go through that now, I think. All right. HTML form elements work a little bit differently from other DOM elements in React because form elements naturally keep some internal state. For example, this form in plain HTML accepts a single name. Right, so it's got a single name. And yeah. This form has the default HTML form behavior of browsing to a new page. Ooh. Yeah, when user submits it. When the user submits the form. If you want this behavior in React, 
it just works. But in most cases, it's convenient to have a JavaScript function that handles the submission of the form and has access to the data that the user entered into the form. The standard way to achieve this is with a technique called controlled components. All right, so controlled components. In HTML, form elements such as input, text area, text area, and select typically maintain their own state and update it based on user input. In React, mutable state is typically kept in the state property of components and only updated with set state method. We can combine the two by making the React state be the same, the single source of truth. Then the React component that renders a form also controls what happens in that form. Ugh. Or subsequent user input, an input form element whose value is controlled by React in this way is called a controlled component. For example, if we want to make the previous example log the name when it is submitted, we can write the form as a controlled component. All right. Yeah, so. I guess we'll try that last. How that is plain form React, and then we'll try this one. Scroll up to the first example, the plain HTML example. Let's copy the code. All right. Mm, come on. No, come on. Yeah. Okay. Form. Form. Test. Make that first one capitalize. Capitalize on first form practice or something. Okay. Just import React and write that basic functional component. Semicolon. This part needs a semicolon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just write the constant form here. The functional component. Then place it that in the return. Pardon? Write <coughs> functional component, then copy, paste that form in return of the constant component name, constant. Form React array. Write some component that we form. The name you mentioned in the file name, just use the type of component. Equal is a arrow function. Return in return paste this form. Return parenthesis. Yeah, inside then paste this HTML. Inside the prints or uh, an object? Yeah, yeah inside. <coughs> okay. Do you need a semicolon there? Pardon? Move this form into that return block. Okay, I'll just do this. Oh, uh, what happened? Make it all out of whack. Okay. 
export default um, form okay just copy it and use it for key import it okay app render it uh, you need to import in the app <coughs> Let me just do this because this is kind of a continuation of what we're doing. Uh, let me do this. H2 uh, example from React JS.org. Okay. Let me save that and then come back over here. And yes, clear. We already completed that part. Line okay. wait. Okay. Import that. Import. Form. Yes, save that. Form. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Put, same, put semicolons at the end of that import statement or all three. Okay. So come back to our page. I said failed. Adjacent JS element must be granted and close it back. Line six. The move that is to wrap that complete code in div. Add div. Uh, it's, no, it's no, uh, <coughs> nice thing. Yeah. yeah. Add div there and end it after that form. Or else, uh, move the content into that. Yeah. It's uh, got to be part of one parent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, come on. Twenty six now. Oh, psh. <laughs> oh me. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Has to get my form information. Submit. It didn't do anything. Right. Didn't do anything, but it's reloading the page. Yeah, I that. think it just reloaded. It just reset it. Right? The refreshing the page, right? Click just click on something. This. If you observe that, it's reloading the page. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It's uh, <coughs> doing things here. If you maintain some, if you mention some source or some action part, it will take into some other place. So that is natural behavior of form, but using React, they are treating it differently. We will see that React example next. So what happens if we start? Okay. Hmm. How can we add uh, styles? Yeah, we can use some. CSS. Yeah, you're you're just. Uh, you want to tie that style part? Yeah, you can write simply style C. In the CSS file within here, the app. Or else you can write separate CSS file for every component. Just like for counter, you can write counter dot CSS. For this form react. You can write form react dot CSS. So we can okay, so I could just say app header in my form react. Can I just add this into React? 
Yeah, this is CSS, no problem. You, you can use just like our normal CSS. Come back to our example, I will show you. But I can add that into here. Yeah. Or into here. Into here. No, no, in the view. Yeah, I think you you import. No, no. I couldn't div. add it in here. Give some class name to the div. Div. To the div or the, the header. Twenty-two. We have the line twenty-two div is there. I can only add it to the the div. Come back to app. I think we style our app so it will come center center. Come back to our app component. But. Uh, no, no. I'll show how to style app component. Can I just reuse this information here? Yeah. Okay. Just. Like just say app. That is a class name. We should mention that name in our component. So come back to our app JS and use the class name. In, in app JS. Here in the div. Right. Class uh, name itself. Okay. Uh, class name with the. Class. Okay. In real case. Let me say it's an attribute. So in, after the V in the div tag, uh -huh. it's okay. Inside, inside here. Yeah. yeah. Space class name. It's an okay, attribute. but you can't use class. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That's why we should use class name here in React and use and that app. app header. And will that make everything there like yeah, that? Yeah, hyphen. I think. The exactly as it is in CSS file. Just check how it is in the CSS and use that. Yeah, I think it was app, app header, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Oh. <coughs> and import that CSS in your edge app JS. Import here. Yeah. Import. There is no no need to mention any name. Import from Yeah, in the course, use that. Okay, dot. Dot. Mm. App dot CSS, the file name. Source. No, there is no source. Just mention that file name is there. App app dot CSS. CSS. Okay. So it failed. Okay. Failed to compile it. Yeah, I, Parsing error line four. Wait, I will check it and let you know. I didn't change anything there. No, it's the problem with that import CSS. Oh, from app JS. Uh, I was like an app CSS. I will. Yeah, you're saying don't type anything because it's it's not a component. Or is it? Just remove that from in the import statement. Yeah. Okay, I think you don't need to write <coughs> from. Yeah. Interesting. What's okay, so for your CSS, you don't have to. You don't have to import anything. Come back to our app and see. Uh, oh wow! Wow! Uh, if you want to, we can do some padding to that input element so it will look bigger. <laughs> Here. No, we will. We need to add some class and then we need to write some rules for that style. Come back to our component, we will add some class name and we will write some styles in the CSS file. <coughs> Just come back to our CSS. Yeah, scroll down. Okay. Just input. Use that input tag itself. Yeah. Curly braces. <clears throat> you padding some one padding one frame one R E M. One R E M. 
R E M Ram. Oh Ram. Mm -hmm. Ah, so a lot bigger. Body, okay. Yeah, because you said the input. If you want to target specific input, we can use the class name and write that. <coughs> uh, linked CSS to app.js and um, used padding in that form. Okay. Now I may have to go to bed soon, guys. I'm like my eyelids are better. Just shut and not not open. <laughs> I'm getting tired. Mesfin, did you guys? Yeah. Did you good. want to work on anything? I think I'm fine. I can continue offline. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for JavaScript study group. Yeah. But I All need right. to probably get some YouTube videos loaded. I've got a bunch of them. Just read the docs. So you'll understand better. Then we can. For now, just read that forms part in the morning. Yeah. You will understand what's controlled and uncontrolled. And read that state and props also in the docs. Yeah, here. Component like this. And that state and yeah. yeah. That's four and five. Yeah, I need to just read the whole thing. Yeah, just start from the I have I haven't read I haven't read any of this. I should probably just read it though. Just read and if you want, take some notes from you. Write it on some paper if you find something interesting. Yeah, no, that's probably good advice. Or just maybe just create a read me. Oh, I was going to share this with you guys. Um, from my. I shared it, I think, on the Discord. To me, I think. That's a read me. Yeah. This is my portfolio page. I'm trying to work with it. This is just the template of it. Yeah, you have to do that. Uh, yeah, I got rid of that ugly purple. <laughs> yeah, it's looking clean. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a lot better, but <clears throat> I just need to fill in my content now. Try some different, different image because that image looks dull like this here. Okay. It doesn't look good. Yeah, and make some effect. The clash. Yeah. Okay. That's one thing. Also, you can make some effect like oh, um, and you can have yeah, some gradient yeah. with a greenish thing. Yeah. Then or if we can put on some greenish effect on that image, it looks better. Yeah. I mean, greenish I could reason. I could change these colors. Okay. And, oh, okay. I mean, I was thinking to change it um, to more of a I had set up this I saved this I think okay. if it's gonna pull up I may not I may just need uh, it, it will come I think Wait, it's taking some time okay yeah I don't think yeah, this is a link okay if you save something yeah I saved it here okay I saved this color schema. Yeah, I like this a little better. Yeah, use this light but blue on the right and use this color for some text. This dark color. Yeah, like I was gonna use this for my right color. Yeah. This is actually Twitter. This is Twitter blue. Yeah. 
and then I think, the, I think you explored this side. If you hit the space bar, you get some new pallets every time you hit space. Yeah. Have you ever used this one, uh, Nice one. Uh, well, I use other ones, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost same. That is one material. You can that lock one color here also. If you like some color, you can lock it, and if you hit that, yeah, yeah. just lock that Twitter blue and hit the yeah. space. I like these. I might see if I can get. Uh, Instead of, uh, I kind of like that. Add the port and hit the space again. Yeah, now hit the space okay. one. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a, a, a like a different white. You can use this. Thing. Mm -hmm. We can experiment with the colors a little bit. The fish from really cool. Yeah, I'm trying to get like a white color. I think this is what I had. It actually do, it doesn't look that bad though, does it? A gray. And the, one more thing, Elliot, just open that up labs site. There is one. Uh, which one? Up Labs. Just open a new tab. There is a website. I will show it uh, quickly. Oh, up Labs. Okay. Yeah, for design inspirations. Up Labs. Is it like Dribble? Yeah, it's like Dribble, yes. I think is this it, is from uh, Uplabs.com? Yeah. Okay. It's, I think, from Google. Just like a Dribble. Just search for uh, proto portfolio in the search bar. Just po search for portfolio. Type it. I think it won't show cards right. Portfolio. It's coming. I just yeah. my computer. You can. Okay. So you just so purchase these. That it? What is that? Scroll down. There are some free. There are some free designs. Okay. Cool. There's a lot of things mixed in there. Kind of like that one actually. That's cool. It's a it's a video, I think. Yeah. It's cool that it shows you. What is it called when? Uh, oh, that's cool. We need to just take the impression and we has to write up from scratch. Just take the design and start writing from scratch. So that's cool. Though. So that was probably a React app. We can do it on any way. We can do it using JavaScript, I think. Yeah, that's cool though. Using simple. Because uh, nothing is rendered. And then it's like yeah. super, super minimal. There's like not, not a lot of noise on this page. I think it's like simple that. and uh, no, creative way. Yeah, we can pick some. some we can pick some color set out. There's some word that somebody used for something like this. Um, I can't remember. Uh, that's cool, though. There are many designs there for every startup application. You can take some inspiration from yeah. these designs. Yeah, that's cool. Just click this premium one on the. Just, just to look at it. 898. 
this one is a bit similar to your design but from in your theme it is on right side here the menu is on left side yeah yeah i think if you reduce that width of that menu to something like this it looks cool clean i think you have some yeah big space for that menu Okay, guys. I think I'm better. Fall asleep. But uh, yeah. Now I send you one link if you need some kind of gradient color. Yeah, there is also UI gradients or something exist there to generate yeah. some gradient. Yeah, I'm still toying around with the last color on this one, but. Uh, you can make a gradient by combining these colors from the link that I send you. Okay. You can make your own. In the chat? Yeah. I didn't see it yet. UI gradients. Simply okay. type UI gradients, you will get this. UI gradients. Yeah. You see those, uh, the color, yeah. These two Can colors. Those numbers with the colors that you. Yeah. Interest. So then you will see that. Yeah. This is kind of funny though. Some of these. This yeah, that's pretty cool. Kind of, this, this is kind of a trend using this kind of ingredients. Oh, you can do more than two. Yeah. Oh, nice. We can also change that uh, the angle of the gradient, yeah. falling gradient, from top, left, or the bottom. We can play with that. Some. What's that? It's like the yeah. angle of, uh, you know, the mixing. Oh. They mix the two. Yeah. Ah, so you can get the CSS. Here, if you see, there is two right. We can play with that left, and we can mention some degree, 45, 90, or something like this, in degrees also. In place of that, to right, just scroll left. You will see some in that CSS only. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, in the CSS, yes. See that. Yeah. After the, the inside the bracket, you have two right. So we are make it two left. Yeah. Uh, just edit, and you can make it left or bottom top. There are some different ways to. Right. Even you can use some degree values, some 90, 45, some degree values also there in place of that to right. So it will change the angle of that color. Okay. I better get some sleep. Yeah. Um, before I fall asleep on <laughs> I'm sure some read me or something oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I just created this as a read me um, but um, the markdown I got from somebody else okay. and for all my github projects um, he said that using this is like really the professional way that people use GitHub. Okay. Is that they add a professional looking readme. So it like describes the project. Describe. You can put a you can put a screenshot in there. And he's like if it's like a to do if it's like a project with a to do or like a uh counter or something like that you would give screenshots of different pages like you would say um, reset and then you'd give a reset and then the next one you'd give um you know increment one and then yeah i don't know something like that so you'd have those like side by side like a reset 
value of zero and then incremented to five or something like that. Um, and then you can say technologies used. Um, it's really cool, I think. If you have an API, you know, your photos were courtesy of Unsplash. And then you just like say, thank you for reading this. I should say yeah. thus far. I misspelled that. That shouldn't say this, but. Uh, and then I offer credit to the yeah. HTML5 out for, for the template. Okay. And then the icons and then just whatever else. You know, but it look it looks nice. You know, it looks yeah. nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, feel free to like go to my uh, portfolio. I want to one more point to this uh, readme. If someone want to install your application on their local machine, we should add some steps to run this. I think in npm install those things, so they can follow the steps to run this application. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If the, if it's got React or anything like. Yeah. If it's got a framework. Yeah. Yeah, like it's whatever you need it to be. Like you can. Yeah, it's really cool. I think I will fork it and use it to update my repos. Yeah, yeah. He was saying it's helpful to have a, a high yeah, quality. Yeah, it clearly explains every part of our project. Yeah, and then it just like is like it's almost like the documentation for your yeah for your yeah. um, your app or whatever like it's the thing that explains your project so yeah. that way yeah. they know yeah. they know that they you understand, understand your project understand yeah you, like this is and then it kind of helps you you know as you prepare for interviews cuz then um, it looks more professional like yeah and and maybe yeah, they'll ask they'll ask like better questions of your your work if they've looked at your github and they see they've seen like high quality readmes you know um then you know like they'll they'll probably get to the 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 better stuff in your uh in your portfolio in terms of like the projects that have high quality readmes but uh yeah, I really good. I think I like this template. I will use this for my projects. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's here. So just come to my yeah, portfolio I and I, my yeah, get the readme if uh, <coughs> and if you want it. Uh, I can I can send this to you as well. I'll just I already shared it yesterday. Did I share it to everybody yeah. or just to you? To, I think uh -huh. in my personal chat, I think. Okay, I'll post it to Mesfin then. Yeah. Yeah, go, go to that uh, repo and just fork it and um, at a minimum just get the uh, readme, you know, and copy it and use it. Just uh, swipe the mark down and then uh, he yeah. said. He said he just uses this markdown for all of his projects. Uh, he just uses it as a template, and then he rewords it for every project. Um, but uh, I found it helpful, you know, for like, especially adding in like the um, the screenshots. I think is a good touch. And then, um, you know, like having the gray box for your uh, for all your frameworks and everything, it's a good touch too. But I'm gonna fix something in here before I forget. Uh, I needed this to go to the next line. I may have to look something up for Markdown. But anyway. Okay, it's good. We can play around with it. I think it is getting late, so go to yeah, sleep and yeah, come back to have some sleep. Yeah, we'll pause and um, that will end today's session. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you've if you happen to have stayed this far, uh, kudos to you for just hanging out with us on YouTube. But uh, do leave us a comment and 
uh, subscribe to the channel so that whenever there's um, new videos that are loaded, um, you know, if you, if you tap the notifications and have subscribed, then uh, you'll be sure to get those whenever they come available. So um, anyhow, happy coding, everybody. Yep. Bye-bye.